With the playoffs drawing near, we see our first teams clinching playoff berths. The Titans of the Eastern Conference have a showdown at Rogers Place, and the Seattle Thunderbirds are tightening their grip on the heavily contested US division. All that and more will be coming at you shortly. I'm Kai Fahrenholtz, and you've tuned in to WHL Weekly. Flying left wing side, Gunther Hill walk in, Richard, he scores! Now he's got the hat trick, Dylan Gunther. Hometown kid flying down that left wing. Who can stop that? But Bedard cuts to his right, chokes and scores! Caught him in our, breaks the deadlock 22 seconds into the second period. <laughs> Welcome back. I hope all of our Canadian viewers had a wonderful long weekend, got to enjoy all those extra games on Monday, leaving us with a lot to scour through today. It is nice to see Soptic out on the ice and smiling, and a tremendous tribute here from the Blazers and the Blazers crowd. Let's open things up though by congratulating Seattle Thunderbirds blue liner Samuel Knasko. He's coming back from Beijing with some hardware he'll never let go of, securing a bronze medal with Slovakia's men team after toppling the Swedes in a 4-0 victory. He nabbed an assist in the seven games at the Olympics, but the fact that he's coming back to a team that's currently on a seven game win streak that they've achieved while he was gone just makes you think what this team is capable of come playoff time. To put it lightly, the core group of guys are just putting on an absolute clinic, acquiring Hiring Lukas Feshkovsky has really added that volatility the top six really needed, and the numbers prove it. 13 points during this win streak, and 19 points since being traded. His play has bolstered the stats of Henrik Robinski and Jared Davidson. As you can see in these numbers, the guys have combined for 35 points over this seven game stretch. And when you look at the depth, they're contributing at a ridiculous pace as well. Schaefer is a goal per game, Gustafsson is a point per game, and the top two pairing of Kevin Korczynski and Jeremy Hansel has been setting everyone up like they're getting the dinner table ready. And the T-Birds 5-1 win over the Winterhawks on the 19th was a staple performance. 37 shots to 27, 3 for 6 on the power play, and securing a shorthanded goal as well. If there was any team at the start of the year that I felt was going to stun people, it was the Seattle squad. With a variety of size and skill and creativity they have, I can easily see them breaking the hearts of the Winterhawks or the Rockets come playoff time. During their streak, they've only allowed their opponents to score 3 goals once and the team that handed that to them was the Victoria Royals. In layman's terms, like I don't know if there's a more important overager to a team than Taryn Pfizer. The seasoned vet is a literal game changer for the Royals, and I have the stats to prove it. With Pfizer on the roster, the Royals are 9-7-3 with 61 goals for. Without? They're 5-23-2 with 53 goals for. The guy has only played in 19 games of the team's 49 and is involved on 20% of the team's total goals this year and sits 4th in team scoring. And when you look at the fact that he is a plus 8 and the next highest full-time player is their other overager Bailey Peach with a minus 9, you know Pfizer's doing the right things. His return has helped spark this team in the right direction, breaking the team's 18 game losing skid, and that race for the final playoff spot with Tri-City and Spokane is really tight now. If Pfizer stays healthy, I don't see why this team wouldn't hold on to that 8th spot. Speaking of playoffs, we actually witnessed two of the West's top teams clinch their playoff spots this week. The Everett Silvertips secured their spot in a convincing 3-1 win over the Royals where they posted an impressive 59 shots. And then the Kamloops Blazers would topple those silver tips in a 4-3 shootout win on Family Day after Dalen Kiefler batted home a greasy one to send the game into extra time. Goaltender down shot, scores! Scores! In terms of capturing the division banner though, I feel the silver tips have a strong case to win their third banner in four years as they sit eight points atop of the Winterhawks. Although the Blazers aren't home free yet. The Rockets are 10 points behind them with 5 games in hand, and the two teams will face off 8 more times this year until the playoffs begin, and the Rockets are 6-0 versus the Blazers this year. 6-0. It could really be some fun hockey, and it could be a potential playoff matchup in the near future. Although the PG Cougars were giving the Rockets a bit of a test this week, the two teams squared off 3 times and Kelowna left on top winning the series 2-1, but the Cougars sliced them up good with a 5-2 victory thanks to the hat trick from Carter McAdams and the stellar crease work from top draft eligible goaltender Tyler Brennan. The Rockets only won their games 3-2 in each contest over the weekend as well. Like perhaps the Cougars' young core is finally beginning to settle in, and maybe this team can put up a fight against whoever they will face in the first round. Brennan is not the only draft eligible goalie that is catching my eyes of late now. Let's see who it is in the prospect watch. Andrew Crystal, the cross goal! Frank Bedard pulls the trigger, 
bat save, rebound, score! With Dylan Grant out for an injury for the next bit, the other Dylan was filling in, that being Dylan Ernst, and he served well in his three starts. Two of them were versus Everett, and he made 88 saves across his three starts, including a 40 save win versus the Silver Tips, stopping Olin Zellweger in the shootout to cap off the strongest performance of his WHL career. And the other attendee was draft plus one Tyler Palmer of the Royals, who capped off a tremendous week with a shutout versus the Giants, making 35 saves to help carry his team to a 3-0 victory. Outside of the crease though, but still doing solid defensive work, is Broncos center Connor Havidson, who is one of the youngest guys in the draft class, but he doesn't play like it. His reliable two-way game is hard to ignore and he's been awarded for his efforts lately, nabbing two goals versus Medicine Hat and adding an assist on Josh Davies' goal versus Regina, who is actually on my list too. Davies has unlocked more of his offensive tools over the weekend, providing three goals and six points and was a key factor in securing two big victories to help separate the Broncos from the rest of the pack. And finally, 2023 eligible Nate Danielson is just finding new ways to solidify himself as a first round contender for next year, recording a hat trick and six points over the weekend to get himself over a point per game, leaving him only behind Zach Benson and Connor Bedard for points per game among 2023 eligibles. Danielson's Wheat Kings have been the talk of the town lately in the Eastern Conference as well. They've won 8 of their last 10 games and currently ride a 4 game win streak, with major props to Danielson. But the real damage is being done by Ridley Gregg, like literal damage. <laughs> the kid is such a workhorse and plays such a fierce game. It's no wonder why he was able to put up a smoking 8 points over his last 4. Like some may have called it a reach when he was taken in the first round in 2020, but damn like this kid just knows how to blow away expectations. Speaking of which, everyone in Edmonton had their minds blown on Sunday. Get behind the net, Gunther, lacrosse style play, he scores! Finishing the hat trick in style, Dylan Gunther goes Michigan! Four goals and a Michigan? <laughs> he's, he's just toying with us now, Gunther, like holy crap. Like I told you, the Oil Kings maturity and confidence was about to seep through, and this team is just firing all cylinders. Although I did say I believe the Ice still have the stronger roster. Well, the two got to face off on family day and boy was I ever proven wrong. Edmonton's core just went AWOL on Winnipeg after surrendering two quick goals in the first. Justin Sordiff just looks like he's been with his team for years already, potting two home on both ends of the special teams. Edmonton just railed Winnipeg 6-3, clobbered them in shots, slaughtered them on draws, just dominance everywhere. They're on a six game win streak and after taking care of the ice in that fashion, it's going to be interesting to see who can top them as the regular season comes to a close. It's about time we squeeze out the top players. First off, I got the boy we got in the intro, Dylan Gunther. Six points this weekend, including that four goal game with a Michigan. <laughs> like, way to raise the bar. And then Ridley Gregg will take that next spot for his piercing eight points over the week. He's really putting on a show in Brandon right now. And finally, Arshdeep Baines of the Red Deer Rebels. He got six points over the weekend and aims to take back that title of top scorer back from Kyle Krinkovic. As for the teams, Bane's Rebels will crack the list for their big wins versus Winnipeg and Saskatoon to further rise in the standings, Brandon and Edmonton will follow with their impressive streaks, and Seattle, quietly but surely, getting it done in the West, they're on that 7-0 tear and toppled the Winterhawks like they were nothing. Bright stuff ahead. To wrap it up, the top prospects game rosters got named, lots of quality players from the dub, some missed out, but hey, like it's just a little game, nothing to get sore over, the time will arise for those. And then anyways, like, just hope you enjoyed, thank you for the incredible engagement on the last video, you guys are incredible, I feel motivated after making every video, but seeing that reception just really warms my heart. I owe you guys. In the end though, cheers, and have a great day. See ya.